you have probably experienced Doppler effect in sound. It goes something like this. What is that? Let's try and understand this with an example. Let's consider a stationary source, say a car, which is producing a sound of frequency 5 Hz. Uh, let's assume the velocity of the sound to be 350 meters per second. Alright, let's look at an animation of this in which our clock starts the moment the car starts producing waves and the clock stops exactly after one second. So this is a static picture of the situation after one second. This is a distance traveled by the first wave in one second. So the speed of the sound is 350 meters per second, this distance must be 350 meters. And in this 350 meters, we have five waves. So five waves occupy a space of 350 meters. Thus, one wave would occupy a space of 350 divided by five, which is 70 meters. And this space occupied by one wave is given a name, it's called the wavelength lambda. So now we can write a general formula for lambda. Notice that this number over here, 350, is actually the velocity of the sound, and this number down here is just the frequency. So lambda equals velocity of the sound v divided by the frequency f, or f equals v divided by lambda. To calculate the frequency registered by any listener, we will always use this formula, f equals v divided by lambda. So if I listen from here, I will register a frequency of 350 divided by 70 equal to 5 hertz, and from here, 350 divided by 70 also equals 5 hertz. Duh! Well, so far, so good. Now imagine the same car producing the same sound is moving towards the right at a tremendous speed of say about 200 meters per second. Let's look at the animation of this. Compare this with the previous picture and you notice some differences. Here I have drawn the new situation. Notice that in the direction of the motion, the waves are compressed and the wavelength has shrunk. But in the opposite direction over here, the wavelength has expanded. This is all due to the motion of the source. So do you think my ears would now register the same frequency of 5 Hz when I listen from here or from here? Let's find out. First, let's calculate the new wavelength over here. Again, notice that this distance is 350 meters. But in that one second, the source is also moving at 200 meters per second. Hence, this distance traveled by the source in one second must be 200 meters, right? So now you can see that the five waves are squeezed in this tiny distance of 350 minus 200 equals 150 meters. So how much space does one wave take now? It only takes 150 divided by 5, which is equal to 30 meters. Thus the new wavelength, let's call it as lambda prime, is just 30 meters, is lower than before, as you can clearly see. And the new frequency that I registered, we can calculate using the same formula, f equals b by lambda, but now we will substitute for lambda, lambda prime. Thus, f prime, the new registered frequency, becomes v divided by lambda prime equals 350 divided by 30 equals 11.7 hertz. Ooh, notice that I register a higher frequency than 5 hertz. Okay, let's quickly generalize this. Notice that lambda prime, which is 350 minus 200 by 5, is nothing but velocity of the sound v minus the velocity of the source vs divided by the actual frequency. Hence, the registered frequency f prime is v divided by lambda prime, which just gives us f times v divided by v minus vs. Okay, what would I register by standing over here? Well, the calculations are similar. From this side, the five waves take up a space of 350 plus 200 equals 550 meters, making the new wavelength lambda prime equal to 110 meters and so the registered frequency f prime just becomes 350 divided by 110 equals 3.2 hertz a lower frequency so in general f prime equals f times v divided by v plus vs 
So in short, as this car is approaching me, I hear a higher frequency of 11.7 Hz and when it recedes away, I hear a lower frequency of 3.2 Hz. Hence, because the source was moving with respect to me, the listener, the wavelength changed and this caused a change in the perceived frequency. This effect is what we call as Doppler effect, named after the Austrian physicist Christian Doppler. So let me demonstrate that. This phone is going to produce a frequency of 1000 Hertz. I hope you can see that over here. This is the microphone and this is going to act like the detector. And I'm pretty sure you can see that I'm pretty transparent. In the background, I am using a program called as Audacity and that's recording this particular, what, the particular audio. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch this on, a thousand hertz frequency sound, and then I'm gonna start moving this, this way. And once I do that, we'll be able to see the Doppler shift happening and then we'll analyze it and we'll check whether the frequency has changed. Stationary source. No Doppler shift. Okay, now comes Doppler shift. That'll be enough. I have all the data needed, and now let's analyze the data. Okay, so we'll zoom into the part where we started hearing the 1000 Hz frequency. I think here it is. Quiet now. Alright. Okay. So here is the 1000 Hz frequency. So what I'm going to do is, this is non-Doppler shifted 1000 Hz frequency. I'm going to go to Analyze and I'm going to click on what is called as Plot Spectrum. And when I do a Plot Spectrum, as you can see, you get what is called as the Frequency Analysis, where on the x-axis you have the frequencies and on the y-axis you have the amplitude. Now notice that this was supposed to be exactly 1000 Hz, but nothing is perfect in this universe. But I'm getting these spikes. And these spikes are the one that's where you have the maximum amplitude. So let's go back, go to the spike, and you can see over here, down the frequency is mentioned. And the frequency is not exactly 1000, that's 997. That's called as the fundamental frequency. That's the non-Doppler shifted. That's like the actual frequency. There's also another spike over here that's called as the second harmonic. Uh, that's almost twice as that. So it's 1999. And there are other harmonics available, but let's not look at those. Let's just concentrate on this primary one. That's 997, that's the fundamental frequency, and 1999. So we're gonna keep track of this. All right, so let's zoom into this part here, and let's look at this. So you can see this, some sort of a, a amplitude increase and a decrease. This is the part where the Doppler shift took place. So before this, the source was approaching, and after this, the source went receding away. Okay, so if we analyze over here, I hope to expect a higher than 1997 frequency. So let's plot spectrum and let's put our spike. Booyah! Look at that! 1003 hertz! Yes! Let's look at the second spike, that's the second harmonic. Ooh, notice we again get a much higher frequency than before. Physics works! Awesome! So here is where it approached and now here is the receding. I hope to now see a lower frequency when it moves away from me. Let's plot spectrum. Let's put my cursor over here and booyah! Awesome! 994 hertz. That's smaller than 997. Doppler shifted away and so frequency decreased. Let's look at this. 1996. The second harmonic is at 1996. Ah, so good when things work. So let's summarize the formula. The apparent frequency f prime is f times v divided by v plus or minus v s. When the source approaches the listener, the registered frequency should increase. Hence the denominator should decrease, right? Hence we get a minus sign. Similarly, when the source recedes away, we must get a plus sign. Hope that made it easy. Now when I define Doppler effect, I said it happens because the source is moving. But guess what? Doppler effect can also happen even when the source is stationary. To find out how, meet me in the next episode. So stay tuned.